All right, students, we are continuing on with experiment 20, the unknown aldehyde and ketone identification. And we are moving on to the 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine test. So in this experiment, uh, aldehydes and ketones will react with the compound 2,4 uh, dinitrophenyl hydrazine, and we should form water plus a 2,4 dinitrohydrazone. Uh, these can be uh, yellow or reddish precipitates, so we're going to see how well we do with our compound. Right, we're starting this experiment by measuring out half a milliliter of 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine solution into each of our test tubes. So we're doing the same six compounds that we did in the bisulfite test. Okay, so uh, we have measured out our 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine uh, into each of the samples. I'm going to go ahead and start with acetone, and we're adding a couple drops of each sample to our test tube. And I'm putting two extra drops versus what the experiment calls for, but this is just to ensure that we get our liquid to join to the 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone uh, at the bottom. And let's see if we get any precipitation. Ah, okay, so I'm going to try to bring this as close to the camera as I can, but do you see small orange flecks happening in the solution? There's some very small orange flecks happening in there that appear to be precipitating. I'm going to set this one aside and we'll come back to it in just a moment. This has been the acetone sample. All right, so I just added a little heptanol to the test tube for the heptanol sample, and looks like we are getting some slight uh, thickening of the solution here. And on the walls of the uh, test tube here, it looks like we're developing something for heptanol, but I'm gonna put this one aside and uh, let it react for a few moments. Okay, let's add to uh, some sample to benzaldehyde. That last little drop just didn't want to fall. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shake this one up as well. See how how's it looking? Oh, and this one made it precipitate at the bottom right away with a little couple of red flecks happening down at the bottom of the test tube. Okay, so benzaldehyde is definitely positive and giving us some reddish flecks at the bottom of the test tube. Ah, our acetone sample is also showing some more of that orangey red precipitate at the bottom of the test tube. And let's take a quick look at heptanol. Heptanol looks kind of like a two-layer system, like a viscous, oily substance towards the top. All right, let's take a look at our next three samples. So next up, we will have three pentanol. Go ahead and shake that up just slightly. Right. We'll look at two propanol. Last but not least, we will add some acetophenone to the last test tube. Okay. Okay, so next up, what I'm going to do is uh, Scratch each sample slightly with my glass rod here. And so I'm starting with the acetone sample. See 
see if I can increase that precipitation. Well, uh, the precipitation isn't really increasing, but the slight orange flecks are pretty still, they're pretty visible. Kept the now sample. My heptanel sample is uh, definitely forming something, but it looks more like a yellow oil than a actual solid precipitate. So that's an interesting note. All right. Our benzaldehyde is uh, very precipitated. No scratching necessary here. Uh, you can see that the solution has become very viscous and we have some uh, solid solution running against the in inside part of the test tube. So benzaldehyde is very, very positive. All right, let's take a look at 3-pentanone. And 3-pentanone looks pretty good. Repentinone has a slight amount of precipitate at the bottom of the test tube, uh, but it is definitely noticeable from my angle. All right, so we've got a positive for 3-pentanone. And just to reiterate, um, acetone and benzaldehyde were definitely positive. Uh, Heptanel is giving us somewhat of an oily substance versus a solid. Uh, so we'll warm this one up in a bit and see what we can get. Uh, two propanol. Let's take a look here. See what we get. The solution in two propanol is pretty much same, the same as what we saw with uh, uh, with the two four dinitrophenylhydrazine solution. I don't see much difference between. Uh, and, and I don't really see any precipitate happening in here. This is uh, normal. This is uh, supposed to be a uh, secondary alcohol, so we should not see a precipitate happening here. All right, and lastly, we see acetophenone, and acetophenone is definitely precipitated, so, uh, you know, no need to scratch here. All right, so the samples that I would like to uh, warm up and take a look at one more time are... Uh, Heptanel, and I'm going to go ahead and do acetone as well. So we'll be back in just a few moments after I warm these two test tubes up. All right, so, so far in our 2,4 DNPH experiment, we see that uh, we have some solutions creating precipitates and a couple that aren't. Uh, so here in the acetone sample, uh, we don't seem to be creating any precipitate, even though uh, we warmed it, cooled it down, scratched it with a glass rod, and we even put it in ice. But I believe what's occurring here is uh, the 2,4 dinitrophenylhydrazone that is formed is too soluble in the ethanol solvent, uh, which is um, what the 2,4 dinitrophenylhydrazone solution is made with. So I believe it's just too soluble to show us a precipitate. In the case of heptanol, let me uh, go ahead and hold it up a little. Uh, we're getting a two-layer system, and if you come in close, you can see that uh, we have a thin upper layer and a very clear lower layer. I believe the upper layer is where our precipitate is, but again, because we have ethanol as our solvent, uh, this is too soluble to become a precipitate. Uh, for the sample of benzaldehyde, we have obvious orange precipitate forming. This one formed without warming or cooling or even scratching. Next up, we have 3-pentanone, and 3-pentanone did show some orange precipitate also without cooling or scratching. 2-propanol. 2-propanol is an alcohol and we don't see any any solid happening in here, so which we expected because it's an alcohol. And lastly we have the ketone uh, acetophenone which has created some very dark orange precipitate. Alright, this has been the 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine test.